Okay. Welcome to Into the Channel podcast, primarily about women's football. Before we hit the pitch, if you enjoy the show or love women's football as much as your boys do, come kick it with us. We do this every single week, sometimes twice a week, span the wide world of women's football. Subscribe, follow YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you like to watch or listen. Links to Twitter, X, Instagram, TikTok, threads, all available in the show notes of this episode. I am your host, Dino DeCespedes, and as always, I am joined by my co-host, Mr. Grant Engel. What is up, man? Oh, I'm feeling fantastic, buddy. Match week 15 of the NWSL, Mm. worthy of celebrating, if you ask me. Oh, he's, he's got a little beverage himself. Yeah, I'm drinking some seltzer today, keeping it light. Understandable. Boy, I might have a case of the Rona I'm battling here, so talk about that one later. Maybe we won't. <laughs> you know, that's what podcasts are good for. <sighs> Two dudes discussing any kind of infectious disease. Maybe let's save that for another podcast. Although, uh, let me just say, your boys are on the right side of history with that one. Firmly believe in medical science, if I, if I may speak for the show. Speak away. Speak away, my good man. <laughs> All right, man. Match week 15. You mentioned it. We're starting to see a, a little bit of separation. You know, this is a show that I don't want to say we popularized the tiers in the NWSL, but we were certainly on the ground floor of that. Mm-hmm. We're starting to see the tiers really shake themselves out here. Teams at the bottom. You don't want to be one of the managers of those teams because uh, job security is it's an issue at this point. But yeah, ton went down this weekend. Where do you want to get started? So I think every match week, you kind of have a few things that jump out. So let's try something new this week. You should pick a team and I'll pick a team. And who is your team of the week? Or maybe it's like the team, the spotlight team. Mm. We can work out how we want to uh, how we want to describe this. But if I say, okay, match week 15, we're coming right off of it. What's the flashbulb in your mind? Who is Dino's team of the week? I got to say, I was really impressed with what the Courage did Mm. against the Spirit. This was a team that, on the road, big time struggles. Yeah. (laughs) Seven road matches this season. You're looking at it, no wins, no draws, seven losses. So you get a team like that heading to Washington, one of the hottest teams in the league. I mean, we've spent a ton of airtime talking about their attackers and just kind of everything that they've got going on. I got to say, I was very impressed (laughs) with what the Courage did tremendous tremendous effort the courage played my orlando pride a couple weeks back and we joined our friends at the uh, loud and proud orlando podcast did a little preview on it and i remember saying okay we're going to north carolina that's going to be tough they're a really good team at home but i feel like this one's going to be dictated by who gets to play ball their way and i think the way the courage play ball when they play their kind of game very very impressive so i went back because i just wanted to look at one stat I'm like, this team seems to possess a lot of the ball. That was a real formula against Washington. So in 13 of the Courage's 15 matches this season, they won the possession battle, 13 out of 15. The only times they didn't win, it was 50-50 against Orlando, 50-50 against Gotham. Okay. <laughs> so they've, they've never lost a possession battle all season, uh, and it really shows. I mean, what did you take away from that performance? The main takeaway from this match is that the Courage just have an ability to just kind of smother your offensive attack, Mm -hmm. where they can just kind of push you into areas where you don't want to be, kind of keep you going backwards, kind of make you reset your offense a lot of times. I mean, I think the book is out there on Feli Rausch, who is just one of the better defenders in the world. Narumi Mura, one of their defensive midfielders out of Japan. Denise O'Sullivan playing beside her. Like they have players who just make life difficult on attacking players. And I got to say, I didn't totally see it coming mm-hmm. when you have a team that has Rodman, Bethune, and Saar. So I just walk away from it incredibly impressed. Yeah. I mean, Bethune specifically had a rough day. She just looked like she was on the wrong frequency in this one. Yeah. And I think you have to credit the courage defensively for just throwing looks at Bethune that she wasn't really able to uh, to decode. You mentioned Denise O'Sullivan, defensive midfielder for the Courage. What a monster game yep. O'Sullivan had. 80 touches. That's her second highest this season. Four tackles. Season high, six interceptions. Season high, six blocks. She was everywhere harassing. Ashley Sanchez, she gets the revenge goal. Obviously, she gets traded from the spirit for the fifth pick. That becomes Hal Hirschfeld. She had an Instagram post uh, to quote Sanchez here. Shocked and heartbroken to be leaving such a special place as her goodbye Washington 
post. Shocked and heartbroken, sort of feels like maybe this, this trade might have cut her off guard. Yeah. But props to Sanchez. She nets the revenge goal, becomes the difference in the match. They get a monster win, their first, their first non-loss on the road this season. And then walking away from this one, I couldn't help but think, if the Courage can play this type of defense and also show this type of chemistry, where it's not just that they're stopping attacks, they just seem to be in perfect position. The passing is crisp. They're outpassing teams. They're outpossessing teams. There's been some murmurs about 2023 NWSL MVP Caroline maybe starting to work up a sweat in some training. We've oh talked boy. about the length of the season. We talked last week about maybe teams prioritizing, deprioritizing the cup, the shield, door A, door B, which which door do we want to go down here? The Courage feel like a team, if they can get a Caroline back, playing this style of play, like, you know, knockout football. It's like, all right, we know what we got to do. Let's just hold the fort. Let's be smart. Let's possess. Let's connect our passes. And you put a player like that back up top. I mean, you look back to last year, they got knocked out by Gotham. No Catalina in that one. I think the injury happened maybe right before that. But um, right. I don't know. Could there be something here come playoff time? Yeah, man, that is a pretty interesting prospect. The MVP coming back, you mentioned it. She was hurt in either the final match or the second to last match at the end of last season, playing so fantastic that she secured the MVP before then, uh, wasn't involved in the playoff loss. Even if she's able to kind of, you know, just give you 25 minutes or 20 minutes in the first match and kind of just start to work her way back. The Courage also signed 26-year-old forward slash midfielder Courtney Vine out of the A-League in Australia, one of the breakout stars of, of the past World Cup. I think Tyler Lucy has played well for the Courage, but if you swap her out at kind of a left attacking midfielder and you put Courtney Vine there, and now you also put Ketoline, the last year's MVP, into the lineup. And this team is already in a playoff position. We're looking at an extremely, extremely dangerous side. Absolutely. And I think um, another shout out to Ashley Sanchez, who I think has been kind of carrying a lot yeah. you know, on, on her shoulders and, and able to be productive. And this was just such a huge hump to get over. This team had struggled mightily on the road. And this was a very, very losable, <laughs> losable match. No midweek, yeah. uh, you know, no midweek matchup to kind of find some tired legs on the other side. Like this was a straight up, all right, we got to go to their house. And I mean, the performance was like, Washington just couldn't get anything going. And then I think when you look back, kind of recontextualize a lot of the season, just be like, okay, well, we know Ketoline's out, but if they are able to inject a player like that back into the lineup, you know, we've talked about this with other teams, it kind of like moves everybody down a peg with regards to like, okay, and then now the other nine, 10 players don't have to carry so much weight. Mm -hmm. it's, it's more evenly distributed. And she's such a home run hitter that, I don't know, knockout football. I wouldn't want to see that team. And, and what's fun is now the courage sits in sixth, the spirit sit in third. So if the playoffs start tomorrow, wow, these two teams would go heads up once again. Yeah, that's fantastic. I mean, you know, I love a good game of if the playoffs started today. It's one of the greatest, <laughs> one of the greatest games you could possibly play in any sports conversation. I think we'll talk about it more later. Do you have anything else on the courage? Nothing more on the courage. I want to shift gears and I want to see and hear about what team caught your eye. What, what, what teams in, in grand spotlight this weekend? All right. So speaking of teams in that second half of the playoff standings, I think we both kind of had the same idea when we thought about doing these spotlights. Give me the Chicago Red Stars. Uh, they notch a 3-0 victory Oof. at San Diego over the wave. Now a struggling wave, a wave that is in a lot of flux. I think it's an impressive win nonetheless. 